message to the table. The table has been set, so take your place. There is no more condemnation. There is only grace. One king and one kingdom making people feel like family. Hi, this is Minister Pedro Afton inviting you to join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. for our series Prayer Changes Things. Join us right here on Group Radio every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Looking forward to having you. God bless. Hi. Good afternoon. This is Minister Theo again, and um, I'm really excited today to uh, join you from the United Kingdom to continue on this program, Prayer Changes Things. And um, I believe that with all my heart, my soul, my mind, with everything I've got, because I am a living example of prayer changing things. And so sometimes we get results in prayer and sometimes we don't get results in prayer. And most of the times it's down to our strategy in prayer, the way we pray. And um, the way we pray, we, has to, we have to pray pray according to God's pattern. And it's not just about praying, but the, the, the things that we do. So today I want to do start on a, a, a series. I know I talk a lot about um, Revelation. And Revelation is intertwined into this. But it's more about meditation. And from that place of meditation, revelation will flow. So I want to do some basic fundamental um, background teaching that will help us to pray according to God's pattern to get into that place of meditation. What we do when we get there and what will happen in that place. So the first thing that I want to look at is cleansing. And so that's the first prayer where as we begin to get to that place to meditate and stay with me because I want to take it from that place and go step by step to that place where we get revelation and we get the results that we want. We get understanding. The word is illuminated in us. And, and um, we get to that place where we get anointing. We are anointed. We, you know, not just reasoning, but because of the, the steps and the process, we get anointed reasoning. So the first thing that I want to talk about today in that process of meditation is the first prayer is, Lord, cleanse me. Cleanse me by your blood. And um, receiving divine revelation is at the heart of biblical meditation. And you must prepare yourself to receive from the Holy Spirit. Um, the way to do that is by repenting and being cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. So you must be obedient. And this is a really, really important point. We repent and we allow God to cleanse us from every sin known and unknown. 
we can't come to God with known sin in our heart and expect that we will connect with the Holy Spirit and we will get the result that we want. We have to make sure that there's no sin there and we are clean. Now, the next point that I'm going to kind of raise here is you must be obedient to previous revelation from God before you move on to get a new revelation from God. And if you want to follow me on that, you can take a note of Matthew chapter seven and verse six, and you can follow the scripture. So we, we first of all, if we were given an instruction by God and we did not follow through, we also need to repent of that. We need to, to confess any sin in our life. That's disobedience. And so um, if we receive a revelation, we didn't act on it, that will cut us off from the ongoing revelation. And that might be the reason why you're not getting revelation. Because the, the, the last one you got, you didn't follow it through. You didn't take the action that was required. Okay? So... We need to confess that. We need to come before the Father and be cleansed and washed. Then we, as we go on, now all of this is in the process of meditation. Or the next point I want to, to raise is, Lord, the next prayer point, Lord, grant me a, a, a teachable spirit we have to be teachable. You know, um, we have to be in a place where we could learn from a child, where we could learn from even an a unsaved person, even a sinner, where we could learn from anybody. We have to be in a place where we humble ourselves before God and we're not thinking that, you know, because we... Uh, this or that, or we have a title, or we have a position, whatever it is that makes you feel exalted. We have to learn how to be teachable. Nobody knows it all. And um, revelation is given to those who maintain an attitude of humility. And it is withheld from the the proud and the arrogant. And um, so keep an open, humble attitude before God. We have to come to God like a little child. You know, you, 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 a little child's attitude. You spank the child or you tell the child off and then they, they cry and they grab you and mommy, I love you, I love you, mommy, I love you. And they're trying to please you, a little child's attitude. And that's what God requires of us. He has to be able to trust us with revelation. And if we're proud and we, you know, I'm super spiritual or I'm, I'm hearing from God and, and um, we're using that as a rod to hit other people, that's not what he wants. He wants us to be able to, to be able to, to help others, to teach others, to bless others, to deliver others, to set others free, to walk in the fruits of the spirit, the compassion, the love, the joy, the peace, the hope. How can we do that when we so we feel in an inflated sense of self-importance? And we feeling so proud because we have achieved X, Y, and C. So we better than, or we not like those ones. We have to watch our attitudes and make sure that it is one of humility. And what I love, I love so much in the, in the Old Testament, when you saw the big kings and the King David and See how they were brought down to sackcloth and ashes and 
crying and weeping in, before God. I'm keeping it real. Keeping it pure. Keeping that connection. And that's what is required of us. You know, the scripture tells us when a man's ways please God, he calls even his enemies to be at peace with him. So, an attitude of humility. That will give us, that will allow God the freedom to shed greater light on any ideas that he has given us and um, to alter things and change things. You know, sometimes God give us a vision and we run in with it, but we run in with it in a certain way, in a certain manner. And he wants to inject fresh anointing, fresh oil, give you fresh help, energize it so that it could reach more people. But if you see it as mine and mine and mine, you shut the door. So it will just be reaching maybe the, the, the few that you have. And you shut in the door, not, not just on, on God, but you shut in the door on the people, the very people that you're meant to serve. Because you've kind of internalized it and it's now you it's become yours rather than God's to use for his kingdom and for his glory. And to meet the needs of the people that he sees on the earth. And he, when he is seeing a need and you are not seeing it, then with your humility and you bowing to him, how to do it, Lord, do your will, Lord, through me, then you will allow him to change here and change there and close this door and shut this door and start this new and do this new for his honor, for his glory for the souls that need to be reached. So it's very, very important to have that attitude of humility. It will cause growth to take place. It will cause expansion to take place. It will, it will cause you to, because of that attitude, to be able to receive freshness from God, pure ideas, wisdom, strength from the Father. So when we come to him, before we even meditate on the word or get there, we have to make sure that our attitude is right our, we are cleansed, we are pure. And then the next point, which doubles up on, on, on what I was just talking about there, the next prayer point as we head in for that meditation is, Lord, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't use my brain, I wouldn't use my faculties for myself. And I want you, even while you're listening to this, to just be in an attitude of prayer. And if you have been, you know, using your, it for yourself, your, your, your resources, your, you know, that he has given you your talents, your abilities, that's not the way to, to get the revelation. That's not the way to get the increase. That's not the way as we meditate to, to be able to get the enlargement of the word or the illumination of that word. We have to have things in the right perspective. So we give in ourselves to him. We can do nothing of our own initiative but only what we see and hear by the Spirit. 
our mind is not ours, you know, to use, but a mind to present to God so he can use it and fill it with anointed reason and divine vision. We have to submit everything to him, submit this mind to him. We could have genius ideas, but it's not his ideas. And sometimes it, it might be an idea for another time or for another project. But when we submit it to him, he will give us that revelation. He will give us that illumination. He will give us that understanding so that we don't go building without him. And, um, you know, we have Hebrews 6 and 12, Romans 12, 1 and 2 that summarizes if you use your mind for yourself, it becomes dead work. So we have to be praying specific prayers so that we can get the divine enablement, the divine empowerment, the divine illumination, the divine wisdom that comes from the Father, and, and some of us haven't got it because we haven't been praying in this pattern. We haven't been, you know, bringing ourselves before him, emptying ourselves before him, and allowing him to help us with our human frailties, with our human mind, with our human ideas, with our human wisdom. We have to give it to him to get his divine empowerment, anointing, blessing, to make it useful and effective for his glory. And um, so the next point I have, remember we're still talking about you know, how to meditate effectively. So we yield in ourselves to him. We, we keep yielding to him. And the next point is, Lord, I pray that the eyes of my heart might be enlightened. And that's in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. So we need to slow down as we, as we read, as we read the scripture. Spend time over it. We can't be in a hurry. And um, we, as we ponder, we think over it in our heart and in our mind, as we pray for God to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him as we read. So when we read in the scripture, as we were about to be meditating on it, we asking him to give us that spirit of wisdom and revelation as we read, as we meditate, so that the word is, that will come alive, they will jump out at us, they would light up for us, and we will see it for what it is and what he's saying to us at that time, in that situation. So that we could flow with the life of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God, the, the help of the Holy One. when we read his way. I know I, you know, in, in, in the religious world, um, Bible studies is, is, is what we call, um, you know, meditating on the scriptures and spending time in Bible study. But we know that Bible study is not done that way. There's a lot of human thinking, a lot of human 
feelings and a lot of human wisdom that goes into it. But when we want to meditate and we want to, to hear God and we want to be able to get God's perspective on things and let him tell us what he is trying to state us in the scripture. How does this apply to where we are now, where I am at now? You know, kind of illuminate this word for me. What? does this word have to do with where I'm at now? What are you trying to say to me here right now? You personalize it. And he will speak. As long as we have met the conditions and we, we pray in according to his principles and strategies. He will speak and he will meet with us. So the last point I'm going to um, raise because of time, and I'll continue next week. The last point I'm going to raise is prayer point. We're still on meditation. Lord, I present the abilities to reason and to imagine to you. To fill and flow through by your spirit. We don't want to miss it. So we present in our ability to, to reason. You know, when we study the word, most of the time we use reason. We present in that ability to reason to him. So that it would not be our reason that we teach in others. It would not be our reason that we we, we, we using in, in, in a particular situation, but it will be his divine divine wisdom, his, which is higher than us. So we have that ability to reason and to connect. So meditation involves presenting all that we are to God for him to fill us. And that's the reason he will fill us with him. So it will be less of us and more of him. And then when he fills us with all of him, he can use us for his glory. He can use us, we can, we can speak from the overflow. We can live from the overflow. We can do, we can be impactful and effective for him. And um, his spirit will be able to flow through us. And sometimes when we're trying to meditate or getting into that place of meditation, for some people, it's um, what can help to get there is a little soft music, a little worship. And as you begin to worship, you begin to see from the eyes of the spirit you begin to see his glory all around. You begin to see glorious images. You begin to see him. You begin to see, you know, his love. He begins to show you different things. Sometimes you're worshiping and he gives you a key in that place. So that, so that you could use that key to unlock that door that he has 
led you to. But you get it in his presence. You get it in that place when you, when you meditate, when you desire to have his wisdom, his understanding, his will, his purpose and plan manifested in your life. Okay, so I have another, um, I'll carry on. I still have more time than I thought. And the next prayer point that I would raise would be, Lord, show me the solution to the problem I'm facing. Because that's what he desires to do. He doesn't want us to stumble from one situation to another without hope or without help or without any guidance or breakthrough. It doesn't mean sometimes that the problem gets taken away, but sometimes when we know that because that he is with us, it empowers us to stand in it and forces us to stand in that place because he is standing with us and sometimes all we need is a reminder sometimes sometimes he will tell you you've already got the victory and sometimes what stops us in that now because sometimes we are it's hard for us sometimes as human and that sometimes happens because we haven't fully submitted our mind to him. And that faculty of the mind. So the mind is busy reasoning and the mind is busy thinking. I'm not strong enough. I don't, I'm not influential enough. I'm not powerful enough. And he's saying, you are my guy. You are, you are my servant. You are the one that I am going to use. And you are saying, use somebody else because your reasoning is in the natural. But when he speaks a word, he speaks a supernatural word. And so for that to be enforced and for that to come through, then you have to come in alignment with that truth and you come to through that process by the humbling you come through that process by the cleansing you come through that process by the submission you come through that process by presenting your reason to him that ability to reason to him so he could fill you he could flow through you and, and cause you to overflow in him with his wisdom, his light, his revelation, his solution. So sometimes it's, it's not even about God not being there or oh, God gave a word and he, he didn't... Um, do anything else we have to take action when he give us a word he we have to do what he says so sometimes you hear people say well he gave a word 20 years ago he said i'll be a great and mighty prophet to the nations and he might have added a few things to that but you never acted on anything so you never started to read, to study, to pray, to speak it in, to pray it in, pray it in, pray it in. Because when you get into that place of meditation and prayer, it, you get more revelation. It begins to unfold. It begins to unravel. It, it takes time, like he did with Moses. And, you know, in the, he took him, he didn't send him to Bible school, you know. Because that's where most of us go. But he sent him to the backside of the desert where he taught him. 
how to hear his voice, how to get divine revelation, how to walk in divine wisdom, how to walk in a right attitude, how to have a humble heart how to deal with pride and all, all of the issues of life. And we get that by meditating. We get that by coming into his presence. We get that by looking to him. So we need to be able to be hungry. We need to be able to have some, you know, cultivate discipline and search for his wisdom, seek for his wisdom, ask for his wisdom. And he will always give it to us, always. I'm almost to the end of this today, but I will continue with it next week. And um, so just in closing, I would just pray for every listener. Father, I just want to pray for everyone who desires to walk in your wisdom. Everyone who desires to, Father God, walk in, in that closeness with you, that intimacy with you, to, to be able to meditate, to be able to get light from your word, instruction from your word, guidance from your word, help from your word. Father, I pray, oh God, that, Father, we would be, able to apply your, your, the blood of Jesus to every unconfessing, every listener, God. Father, with sin that are not confessed, I pray, God, that they would apply your blood to every unconfessed sin. Father, God, I pray that your people would have a teachable attitude, Lord, that we would be so humble. We would ask you to show us, Lord, show me your ways. Show me your ways. Father God, help us to slow down and, and stop and ponder and think your word through and allow the, 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 the process, allow the Holy Spirit to, to work through us as we submit our faculties to you, God, that your, your presence will flow, your anointing will flow, your power will flow, help will come. Lord, I give you thanks to every person, God, and I thank you, Jesus, I glorify you for giving us insight and strength that comes only from you. I release your anointing over every listener, God. And I thank you for helping us all to grow stronger and stronger in you and closer and closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hi, this is Minister Theodore Akba, inviting you to join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. for a series, Prayer Changes Things. Join us right here on Group Radio every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Looking forward to having you. God bless. This is a message to the saints. The table has been set, so take your place. There is no more condemnation. There is only grace. One king and one kingdom making people feel like.